Hi everybody! I'm Katie Elizabeth and this is Crafting a Classy Home. Thank you for joining me here. This is just my second um, kind of floss tube style video um, where we'll talk about what I've been up to crafting. When I posted my first video I really did not expect anybody to watch it. So I was really excited to see that a few people did and a couple of very kind people even took the time to comment and that just made my day. So thank you so much for that. This is my crafting space. It's a work in progress. If you got to see the first video, you'll notice that there's some additions here. These bookcases were in my living room. Um, however, I bought a new bookcase for my living room and I will do a video on that because I'm super excited about it and I want to share it with you guys. But these are just the, I think it's Liatorp, Liatorp um, from Ikea. Uh, when I brought them down, we took the doors off, but they do have doors, so we'll get those back put back on at some point and get them uh, looking a little bit nicer. I'm really excited to have them down here and kind of fill out this space a little bit and have some more storage because as we know crafters need storage. <laughs> Never enough. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what I have been up to for crafting since the last time I got to talk with you guys. So um, <clears throat> for cross stitch I was working on a couple of different projects, but I've only really been working on one since then, and I finished it. So for your viewing pleasure, I have my Narnia. So this was the Stitchy Book Club. Um, it was kind of like a limited series. I know she sold out really quickly, so it's probably difficult to get the pattern at this point, but I love it. Um, I had done it all in those um, silk flosses, um, kind of spoiled myself a little bit. I don't normally frame um, my finished work, I, I, you know, just do something smaller with it usually, or a pillow or something like that. But this one's super special and I wanted to frame it and it was my first time going to a professional framer. I'm dead. Like seriously guys, dead. I don't know how you guys do it. So I went to the framer and he put it out and showed him. And he, you know, oohed and awed over it appropriately, you know, got me in the mood and um, asked if I wanted, you know, what, what I was thinking. You know, did I want mats? Did I not want mats? What kind of frame did I like? Um, and, I, and I know it's not really this style right now, but I do like how things look when they're matted. So he pulled out the, you know, some colors that he could see, you know, in here and it showed me the mat and we looked at some frames and I think I got, you know, something that I kind of liked and he said, well, let me price this out for you. $220. $220? This is, I could go get, I could go get like an 8x11 probably and put this in there. $220. That's insane. Do you guys do this? Really? Well, so the matte colors that he showed me were like this kind of light blue and kind of a light yellow. So the yellow first, like closest to it, and then the blue over the top. I wish I had taken a picture and then a uh, like a, a black frame that was distressed but showed like gold instead of just the wood underneath I really liked it I like the frame I like the mats I like how it looked together but the more that I think about it now the colors were kind of dated I think that I would probably choose different colors so now that I'm over the sticker shock I will probably go back and spend more time picking out exactly what I want and I will have it professionally framed and matted because this is special to me and I want it to have pride of place with my books. So, Narnia. And a couple of things that I kind of boofed up here, down here. I had missed a color when I was shopping and I just, it was like 11 stitches. It just wanted to be done. <laughs> so I just used, you know, one of the other browns that I had for Mr. Tumnus, and then I left this little red ruby jewel till later when I was working on his scarf, and the X isn't a good one. It's, it's like a, it's like a half of an X, a three quarters of an X, and I know nobody else will notice it, but I will notice it, and it's kind of bugging me, <laughs> but other than that, I am so happy with this, with how this turned out. Oh, love it. So that is my Narnia. So that was all I really did for cross-stitching. 
um, since the last time that we talked. But I have done some other crafting. Um, so, uh, like I said, I like to knit and crochet, and, and I've started to do some beading as well. So I went to, where was I? Joanne's with my daughter, and she loves picking up beads with me. And my thought process was to make something kind of peacock feathery colored um, as like a um, scissor fob kind of a collection of tools that you need when you're kind of working on these smaller projects. So I got some beads, some things that I really like, and I know it'll be very difficult to see. I'll, I'll put up in a picture or something. Um, and was just kind of playing around a little bit. Like I said, I'm really new to beading. I got the um, little clasps here so that I can put it on my scissors or take them off or put them on a bag or something. Um, however, none of these that I got are big enough to fit on my scissors. <laughs> so I will need to go back to the store and, and get something bigger. But one of the, the little doodads that I made, I just used like a head pin. Just put a couple of beads on there, a couple of seed beads, and then made a little loop on the top. And I thought, you know, I can make a, a chain and put them all on the chain, or, or well, we'll figure it out. Just playing around with some beads. So this was fun and quick. I um, really like these kind of like blue crackly ones. Yes. Blues and greens, very pretty. Uh, did a little crochet, just a quick little pot holder. Um, those of you who crochet will probably recognize this, or even if you don't, I feel like every Midwest household has these. Um, they're super quick and easy. A good way to learn, if you want to learn how to crochet, it's pretty simple. You kind of just make a chain, and then you don't really do any turning rows. You just go around and around and around and around, and you get this kind of canoe, and eventually you kind of fold that canoe over and then close it off. And then you've got the, you know, a double-sided pot holder. There's nothing in here um, that, like, that you can buy that batting that has like the insulation that keeps the heat away from your hand. But this double layer thick cotton, these are cotton, like a, what is it called? Peaches and cream, sugar and cream. Um, it does work pretty well just to take something in and out of the oven. Uh, and I make it tight, so I use a hook that is, I think, one or two size smaller than the recommended for the for the yarn. So, one thing about these is they are hard in the hands. I think um, I can't do a lot at once. I kind of do a little bit and then take a break. So, but I've got another one. I had um, a smaller kind of green one that was showing its wear, very well loved. Um, so I thought I'd just whip out another one for the kitchen. Um, went with black because it's what I had in stash and uh, it doesn't show dirt quite as badly. So that was um, a finished object, number two. Uh, another kind of work in progress. I, um, well, I have a big project coming up, but I'm gonna wait to share that with you guys, kind of do its own special video, I think. I'm super excited about this project too. But when I went to the store to uh, initiate the planning process for this big project, gosh, I'm trying to be cryptic here. Um, it, wasn't available and I was like well I need something I need something to work on so I went to the yarn store my local yarn shop and uh, picked up some yarn a couple of different skeins um, with the thought process of just something to work on something quick and easy to fill my time you know a little accessory so I found a uh, first off love this yarn buy this yarn all the time um, have used it so much it's Malbrigo Rios love it if you don't use it I'm you should because it's affordable, it's squishy, it knits up well, it wears well, just love it. So this is fuchsia and it is, it is a bright pink color. Um, saw it, I'm like, my daughter will love this. My daughter will absolutely love this. So I grabbed two, um, so I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do with it, but she has decided that she needs a new hat. Where we live, it is still in the 30s, I know but it's still hat wearing season, the end of April. Uh, hat wearing season is very long here. Um, it'll come back before we know it. <laughs> so having multiple hats is available is always a good idea. But I might be able to do it with one, maybe have a leftover. Sometimes hats run into two. 
of the pattern that she picked out. I don't remember the name of it. I will put it somewhere around here. Um, but it's actually crochet, which I don't normally crochet hats. I normally knit hats. Um, I like, but we will we will check it out. We'll give it a shot and see how it turns out. So that was one of them that I got. Um, I was showing my dad this. He goes, oh, you know who else needs a new hat? Your mom needs a new hat. Mom needs a new hat. I knit mom a hat. Gosh, it's probably been five years at least, maybe even seven. I learned to knit when I was on bed rest with my youngest daughter, and she is now almost 10. So it's that hat was one of my first projects that I did, and it was made just out of, you know, Karen Simply Soft Acrylic Yarn, which is great when you're learning and when you're on a budget. Um, however, I'm not those things anymore. Well, I mean, everybody still has a budget, but I can afford something a little nicer, especially for my mom. So I thought I'd make it a surprise, but you know, people like to have some say in their clothes. So I just called her and I asked her what colors that she might like while I was at the yarn store. And she picked blue. Um, and we looked at the different blues, different worsted weight blues. I already had a pattern in, in mind and it was, it was worsted weight. And um, so I'm looking at the wall of yarns there and I was like, oh, you know, I always do Malabrigarios. I always do it. I should try something different. And I'm looking at them and I'm looking at them and they're, they're great, especially for different reasons. Maybe you're doing some color work or something, you know, like a sweater or something. But for these accessories, just like the tonal color waves of Malabrigo, Rios, I just, what is this called? There's something about, is it just tonal? I remember there was a word for how these are dyed, but however, they just, I love them. So we looked at the different blues available and this was what she picked. And of course I've lost the ball band. Oh, here it is. Cyan, cyan with an I, not a Y, cyan. Malabrigo Rios. So she picked out this color. Um, the pattern that I am working up is called Apple Pie by Tin Can Knits. I love their patterns. I've done many of them. Um, they're written well, um, so if you're a beginner or an intermediate knitter, um, they also link to tutorials and they've got great support. I, I just really adore their work. Um, this hat just, you know, like a beanie. It's got some cabling on it. One of my favorite things to do with hats, and it was written into this pattern, if they're not, I often add it, is um, to provisionally cast on, um, knit the ribbing twice as long, fold it under, and then, you know, connect it, attach those two together so that the ribbing is twice as thick. And the reason why I really like that is because when you live somewhere where you wear hats in April, January, December, January, February are brutal and you really need a hat that covers your ears. Sometimes hats are shorter, they don't really come down far enough, so I always make sure my hats are tall enough for that. Um, and then this extra thick around the ears, just it's, it's really, really makes the hats wearable, it makes them do what they need to do for you. So it was just squishy and who doesn't love a good yarn squish? I know I love a good yarn squish. So, and you know, if your hat pattern, if you're, you know, working on it and you're like, this just isn't going to pull down, just, you work another repeat on the pattern, as long, unless it's going to add, you know, three inches. But this is close to one repeat of the pattern. So, you know, if I add another, what is that? Not even a full inch, you know, until it gets to an appropriate height. And that's probably why I usually need a second skein of yarn, because I like that extra thick brim and then an extra tall hat. Um, so I only they only had one of this colorway. And of course this is worked from the brim up, not the top down. And mom and I talked about it, that if I don't have enough yarn to do this portion in a contrasting color, um, maybe something like a dark blue that I have in stash, but I won't know <laughs> until I get to the top and I'll have to pull it all out and start over. But you know, that's part of the process, part of the fun, isn't it? I do like to work on double points. I just find them to be easier to work with for me, um, especially with small diameter objects. Uh, 
Cabling can be a little tricky sometimes. There is a, a, a part in the pattern, one of the rows where the cabling crosses over where the, the double points meet. However, um, the nice thing about that is that it pulls it together because sometimes when you're working with double points, you can get kind of a ladder where they connect, where, you're, where your tension has changed, where you've gotten maybe a little loose over those gaps. So because the cabling goes over that, it almost forces those stitches back together. So, so far, so good. I'm loving it. I'm sure this will be done uh, very quickly. So I do believe that that is all of my crafting since the last time I talked to you. I didn't get as much done, of course, as I was hoping for. We never do. Uh, but we will just keep on crafting. Uh, please subscribe, um, comment. I'm really excited about this new journey that I'm taking with all of you and look forward to a couple of new videos. One will be about my new bookcase. I'm so excited. And then that super special crafting project that I'm working on. So until next time, guys, thank you.